Hey guys, Moidog here, and today we're taking a complete look at the latest update to Squad V 4.0, which introduces China's People's Liberation Army as the next playable faction. This is one of the largest updates to the game in recent years due to the sheer amount of new weapons, vehicles, and deployables added. And this update also gives players a chance to play as a Red 4 faction that isn't Russia, making for a much more replayable game since every other time you're not using this same weapons over and over again. In this video, we'll be having a complete faction overview, going over every single kit, weapon, and vehicle added for the People's Liberation Army, as well as everything else that's included in Squad 4.0 so you can hit the ground running with the new update. But before we do that, I do want to remind everyone to check out the live streams over at twitch.tv slash moidog, where I stream a lot of squad, and we'll be checking out everything live with you guys. The live streams are a lot of fun, especially on big updates like this, so I hope to see you there. So, Squad 4.0 is finally here, and after years of waiting for what was originally called Pan-Asia, OWI has officially released the next faction as the People's Liberation Army, which is no real surprise since the update itself is called Red Star Rising. There are a few new bug fixes and quality of life improvements included in the patch as well, but let's first dive straight into the new faction. Now, first off, when you do boot up the game now, you'll be introduced to this brand new starting screen, with a seemingly endless and ominous convoy of Chinese vehicles in the background. And although I know a lot of people complained about the starting stream music, especially when it comes to their rain track from V3.0, the new music is absolutely stunning. feels right for the faction, it gets you hyped to play the game, and I think it's a massive improvement from the rainstorm we had in 3.0. When in game, the People's Liberation Army gives players a completely new infantry kit. The PLA base rifle is the QBZ-95-1. It has a 30 round magazine and can fire semi or full auto. The recoil seems incredibly manageable, and although I'm not a huge fan of the iron sights, the sight picture itself is very clean and can be ranged up to 300 meters without an optic. Overall, I think it feels a bit more like a punchier L85, which makes sense as the QBC itself is a bullpup as well. Your sidearms are the QNL 95 bayonet and the QSZ 92 pistol. The grenade is the Type 286P fragmentation grenade, which actually looks very similar to the old World War II era American Mark II pineapple grenades. For smoke, depending on the kit, the PLA has either blue, red, or white smoke from the DSF-161 smoke grenades. You'll also get the Type 95 binoculars, which include a very basic sight picture, plus the standard Stadia sight on the top right, and the WJQ-308 entrenching tool. Now, what I absolutely love about the new PLA shovel is the detail the devs have put into it, with your player having to actually tighten the screw once deployed so it stays in the shovel position, as well as loosen it in order to fold it back up. The audio for it is also a really nice touch. Now finally, all kits will also have a standard bandage. And this may be a little nitpicky here, but I was really expecting to see at least some form of a different model for the PLA. The Aussies, for example, have their very own unique bandage model, which is once again a very minor detail, but reinforces the fact that each faction is their own separate entity. Moving on to the kits, the PLA squad leader has three QBZ variants, with SL1 having the iron sight QBZ, pistol, two frag grenades, one blue and one red smoke, two white smokes, binos, and a rally. SL2 has the exact same loadout, but with a hollow sight, which has a very clean ADS and is actually one of my new favorite close range optics, despite it being a little difficult to see with the green and on sand backgrounds. Now, SL3 loses one of the frag grenades for the long range YMA 600 optic, which is very similar to the US Army ACOG and the Russian 1P78. Now, I don't dislike this optic, but I think without a lot of the other range markers that some of the other optics have, it will make finding and shooting targets at longer range a bit more difficult and harder to get used to. For lead crewman, you'll receive the QBZ 95B-1, a short barrel variant of the rifle, which has slightly more recoil. It will also have a pistol, two white smoke grenades, and a repair kit, but a unique addition is the shovel. Yes, this is a shovel for a lead crewman, which makes them the only leadership role in the game 
to place tech and weapon deployables like halves, repair stations, and MG bunkers, as well as digging them up themselves. If this stays, and it's not some weird mistake, then this is a huge buff to Chinese vehicle crews. I'm being honest, I actually wouldn't be opposed to see this change across the board, and every lead crewman having the shovel ability, so that way they can help their crew dig up repair stations, so that way they can repair their vehicles that much easier. Additionally, the regular crewmen have the same exact kit minus the rally. Lead pilots will have the QBZ 95B-1 as well, a pistol, two red smokes, binos, a repair kit, and a rally, while the basic pilots will once again have the same exact kit without that rally. For medics, both kits come equipped with a pistol, two blue and white smokes, nine bandages, and a med kit, while medic 1 will have the iron sight rifle variant, a grenade, and binos, while medic 2 will use the YMA 600 optic without the frag or binoculars due to the long range scope. Riflemen will all have the ability to drop an ammo bag, allowing players to rearm up to 100 ammo worth of rounds, while Rifleman 1 will have iron sights, Rifleman 2 will use that same hollow sight, and Rifleman 3 will have the long-range YMA 600 optic. For automatic riflemen, just like the other factions, the PLA will have one squad kit and one advanced fire support kit, both using the QJB 95-1 LSW, an upgraded version of the QBB 95 automatic rifle, which includes a bipod and 75 rounds drum mag able to be fired in both semi and full auto. Automatic Rifleman 1 will have a pistol, grenade, and binos with the iron sights, while Automatic Rifleman 2 will have the YMA 600 long range optic. I really like this QJB, and with the long range optic and bipod, you can simply full auto mag dump this thing at longer distances or swap over to semi for extremely accurate shots. After shooting with this a little bit, I almost feel like if I'm given the option, I'd actually rather be an automatic rifleman instead of a basic rifleman due to the weapon itself feeling so similar to the QBZ while standing and on semi. But it does give you that option to quickly stabilize and unload extremely accurate fire if you need to. This is definitely a kit I think a lot of people are going to like. Grenadiers come equipped with the QBZ 95-1 and YMA 600 optic, as well as the QLG 10 underbarrel grenade launcher. This has the ability to fire both high explosive rounds as well as red, blue, or white smoke grenades up to 400 meters. It's one of the better GL sites in game, and the ranging ability should make this one of the more flexible kits for Grenadier players. As a marksman, you'll be using the QBU 88 designated marksman rifle with a bipod. It has a 10 round mag and has a pretty quick rate of fire with decent and hip fire handling and is ranged for 400 meters with an extremely nice long range optic allowing you to accurately take out targets at up to 800 meters you'll also have your pistol as your secondary no grenades and simply two white smokes as well as binoculars light anti-tank players will have the choice of either the hollow sight or the yma 600 qbz both with the brand new dzj08 disposable rocket launcher similar to the law or at4 this is a one-time use weapon that can fire accurately up to 300 meters but Unlike those weapons, this projectile does seem to have a fairly slow velocity, making it feel a bit like shooting the RPG-7 tandem rounds, and it just feels really heavy. I found myself having to aim a little bit higher at longer distances, so that way the round just doesn't dunk short and hit the dirt. For the heavy anti-tank kits, you'll have the shorter barreled QBZ 95B-1 with the absolutely massive PF-98 anti-tank launcher. The animation to bring this thing out is insanely slow, and you can see your player actually using the handle to steady yourself after loading. You can fire one multi-purpose high explosive incendiary round, which is your lower damage lat round, or the tandem heat round, used for destroying heavy vehicles. This thing is slow, it's loud, and it's extremely powerful. And if you can get your head around the optics, which has tandem ranging on your left while HE is on your right, the weapon can do some insane damage, even giving you the ability to hit targets at over 1,000 meters away. And if you didn't notice, yes, at the top of the weapon itself is a working automatic rangefinder, the first infantry handheld rangefinder in game, making the Chinese hat kit arguably the strongest in the game since you'll no longer need your squad leader to get give you observation marks to accurately hit your target. Now, if you are going into the training range in order to play around with this, do note that the offline training range has a weird bug where the laser rangefinder actually doesn't work. You'll just get 000 up the top. If you're able to find a Jensen's Range live server, whether that's on the server browser or the custom server browser, you'll be able to see that the rangefinder does work and you'll now be able to range your targets. Machine gunners will be using the QJY88 or Type 88 machine gun with the YMA95 
Live Optic. This is essentially a Chinese PKM and it's extremely fun to shoot. With a 100 round box and the ability to fire up to 1000 meters, the Type 88 is going to be extremely effective at both suppressing targets as well as hitting them. It does have quite a bit of kick though when you lay on the trigger, but learn the recoil and you'll absolutely be deleting the enemy. For close quarters, you can either hit fire or simply pull out the pistol. To wrap up the infantry kits, the Chinese combat engineer will also use the QBZ 95-1 with hollow sights with one stick of TNT, three Type 72 anti-tank mines, and a repair kit plus the ability to deploy sandbags and razor wire. For vehicles, everything on the PLA is a completely new, unique asset to the faction, which is a huge breath of fresh air for the game. The Chinese Logi is the CTM-131 logistics truck, which is extremely quick and handles really well on turns, with a lot of similarities to the British Logi. There's also a transport variant of the CTM, but unlike every other transport in the game, the Chinese actually have a mounted machine gun, and you'll be able to either use the Type 88 machine gun, the same one that you can use as a machine gunner roll, or the Type 89 heavy machine gun comparable to the U.S. Army 50 cal. Gunners will have a full 360 degrees of rotation and should offer some great firepower while squads move around the map. For an armored transport option, China has an entire fleet of CSK 131s, which are extremely similar to the Russian Tigers. Depending on the variant, you can fit up to seven people and all have 300 ammo capacity for infantry rearming. For open tops, just like the transport trucks, you have a choice between the lighter Type 88 machine gun or the Type 89 heavy machine gun. The remote weapon system variant also comes equipped with a QJC-88 heavy machine gun, not to be confused with the Type 88 LMG. The QJC fires 12.7 mm rounds on a stabilized weapon system platform with a three-stage zoom optic. I do really like the full zoomed option, which gives you the bullet drop, and I think that this will definitely help in hitting your targets. Finally, for ATGMs, the PLA has the HJ-8L variant, which has an extremely similar feel to the American toe while firing. The weapon has a two-stage zoom optic with the ability to fire six ATGMs before having a rearm, giving Chinese squads the ability to knock out three IFVs or tanks in one go if they hit their shots. For their APC, China has the ZSL-10, an incredibly unique open top vehicle. This entire thing is kind of odd, starting with the driver, which will have their very own driver's periscope, which you can use to look around the front of the vehicle as you drive around. You get about 180 degrees of visibility, as well as a little bit of up and down, and although it is kind of nice to have, I did feel as if it was a bit limiting to the driver, since you lose that left and right peripheral. With no command hatch, the only person who can actually get a full 360 degree view is the Gunner, which has an armored turret surrounding a Type 89 heavy machine gun. It's not horrible, but when compared to a Striker or BTR, or even a Rifleman that's paying attention, it does seem extremely vulnerable since the Gunner is so exposed. Since it has fairly light APC armor as well, I can't see this in any real vehicle fights, and instead is probably going to be used more of an infantry support role for troop movement and resupply, especially since it's amphibious. Which, once again, isn't a bad thing that's going to be used for troop support, but don't have the idea that you're going to grab this and go delete a whole bunch of vehicles on the enemy team. For their wheeled IFE, the PLA have the ZBL-08, which is more or less an upgraded ZSL APC with a much more advanced turret. The vehicle itself is equipped with a 30mm stabilized cannon with AP Sabo and HE fragmentation rounds, as well as a coax machine gun and defensive smoke. The main gun has an extremely quick rate of fire and will absolutely delete lightly skinned vehicles, and that's not even taken into consideration the two rail-launched Red Arrow ATGMs. Yes, there are actually two variants of the ZBL, one without the ATGMs and one with, giving this IFB the firepower of a Bradley with the maneuverability of a BTR. Since these missiles are actually placed on separate rails outside the turret, you can actually fire them as quickly as you want, but for balancing reasons, you can only control one ATGM at a time. This is a new change coming in 4.0 that will also affect all other ATGM and rapid fire ATGM weapons like the Spandrel. As you can see here, if I fire only one missile, I can control it to the target like normal, but when I fire them in quick succession, the first one begins to lose control and wanders off course with a mind of its own, and my cursor will now only be piloting the last fired missile. Still, this quick firing capability will be extremely useful for engagements and I can see Chinese crews absolutely obliterate the enemy before they even realize what hit them. In addition to the wheeled IFE, the PLA will also be receiving a tracked IFE variant as well, the ZBD-04A. This is the Chinese version of the BMP-3 with the incredibly unique double-barreled turret allowing for both 30mm rapid fire and heavy hitting 100mm anti-tank rounds as well as your standard coax. 
The 30mm has armor piercing and high explosive rounds with a fire rate similar to the ZBL, but with the ability to then quickly swap over to 100mm fragmentation rounds, which can absolutely devastate infantry, as well as three ATGMs for anti-armor. The ZBD is a beast, but a word of caution, the gun sights will definitely take some getting used to. It has three levels of zoom, with the second one giving you the best information for when you're trying to shoot. On the left, you'll see ranging for your machine gun from 400 to 1600 meters. On the right, you'll have a 100 millimeter sights from 0 to 1200 meters and in the middle it will be your main 30 millimeter cannon ranging from 0 all the way up to 2000 meters. Just so you can see this for confirmation if I fire at this Abrams trying to use the middle chevron in order to hit the target with my 30 millimeter rounds we actually nearly miss the tank entirely and our shots are landing on the MG. This is because the laser rangefinder up at the top has our target at 200 meters which will actually put our shots closer to the middle of the top horizontal line and the second horizontal line since these are the indicators for both 0 and 500 meters. Knowing this, we can now hit our target. This also means that your 100mm frag rounds will pretty much only be fired from the second stage zoom in order to accurately get your shots off, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's definitely a bit confusing if you're in full zoom and not sure why the frag rounds are just simply landing so short. The command sight for the ZBD is just like the Russian BMP, with a full 360 degrees and stabilized sight with two levels of zoom. Compared to the other APCs, the driver's hatch gives you plenty of good visibility. The vehicle itself can fit a whole squad plus some and allow allows for full kit changes for infantry, old 600 ammo, and just like the ZBL and ZSL, is also amphibious. To cap off the land vehicles, the Chinese ZTZ-99A will be the PLA's main battle tank, and it looks awesome. Even if the remote weapon system up top does give the vehicle itself a little bit higher profile than the crew might want. It fits three crew members, and as a driver, you'll have about 90 degrees of visibility out the front and right side of the hatch. While driving, the tank itself is fairly fast and quiet, and I'd put the reverse speed definitely slower than the Abrams, but much quicker than the T-72, making it a lot easier to disengage from firefights. The gunner has a two-stage zoom on their optic, and the first stage is actually ranged for 100 meter AP rounds in the center of your screen, with roughly 700 meters being the start of the vertical line here, and the 1000 meter mark at the base of the arrow. For your fully zoomed optic, AP rounds will be on your right, HE and frag rounds will be on your left, further standalone numbers off the right here will be your coax machine gun. Additionally, just like the ZBD, you will also be able to fire four ATGMs from the main gun. The commander has that same QJC-88 stabilized heavy machine gun with 450 rounds in the crow system, and due to the high profile, it has a pretty good view of anyone trying to sneak up on the tank. As a gunner, I really like the ZTZ. It gives you a wide variety of ammo to choose from and accurate its sights. And although the autoloader will give you a similar reload time to the T-72, making the overall fire rate a bit slower than the Abrams, I still think it will be one of the tanks that tank crews will absolutely love playing. For the PLA helicopter, pilots will be able to fly the Z-8G. This thing is massive, and it can supposedly fit upwards of 20 people in it, which is a pretty fair trade-off since it actually has no machine guns, with only one side door and the lowered ramp out the back. This design makes it the only unarmed helicopter helicopter in the game, and it can fit 1500 supply just like the Russian hip, and while flying feels just as heavy. It's not the most majestic of flights, but I think pilots and teams alike will really enjoy the ZHG when they realize just how effective it can be at quickly moving mass amounts of their friendly infantry around the battlefield. To wrap the faction vehicles up, although you can't actually use it yourself, the PLA commander can call in the JH-7A Flying Leopard Rocket Strike. Now, the original patch notes mention that this was a precision bomb, but as you can clearly see, it's actually a rocket strike. More than likely, the bomb wasn't ready yet for the patch and will be added in a future update, since, I'm not gonna lie, seeing another rocket strike that is simply a copy-paste of the Russian Sioux strike is kinda getting old. It's a little disappointing. I was bummed out if I'm being honest, because I really wanted to recreate that opening scene from the trailer, but hopefully we'll just have to wait and see and get it soon. Commanders can also call in either a creeping or static 152mm artillery barrage, as well as a UAV, similar to the other conventional factions. For the FOB, Chinese structures will have their standard white and green digital camo, which is a nice addition to the game and stands out in a way that shouldn't be confused with any other factions. The ammo box is fairly simple, with a bunch of water cans stacked together, the PF-98 tubes and tandem rounds, plus a few 75 round drum mags for the QJB. 
When it comes to emplacements, the PLA is somewhat similar to the MEA in that it actually has a tripod mounted machine gun as well as a standard conventional MG bunker. The Type 89 HMG tripod variant comes without an optic and instead you'll have to use iron sights, but you can use a tripod to your advantage by placing it behind some cover. The bunker has an awesome long range optic allowing you to easily hit targets at a thousand meters or further. And the Type 89 is an overall great heavy machine gun and not only does it look the part, but it sounds the part too. And I can't wait to have these placed around defending my fob. For mortars, the PLA used the PP87, a standard 82 millimeter mortar that can fire HE and smoke rounds and has the same mortar sight found on every other mortar in game. For the ATGM, we get the HJ8, which is the same launcher used in the CSK ATGM vehicles. This emplacement, however, has a much quicker rate of fire, and the first time you use it, the speed will actually take you by surprise. For comparison, here's it firing side by side with the Russian Cornet. It's a great emplacement and will absolutely delete enemy vehicles given this fire rate. And that just about wraps up the Chinese People's Liberation Army. Overall, I absolutely love this faction, and I think it's a well-needed addition to the game, especially since it's a Red 4 faction, breaking up the monotony of everyone versus Russia. Now, if you want to play as the PLA, there are 23 layers spread across 15 maps, with the only maps not including the new faction being Mestia, Belaya, Black Coast, Fool's Road, Camdesh, Manic 5, and Scorpo. You can also go to the training range to test out all the new equipment yourself or the Pacific Proven Grounds to see their amphibious capabilities. Now, I am a bit surprised we don't see them on Black Coast since the faction is amphibious and it would be a great map up against the USMC, so maybe we'll see that in the future, but I also want to clarify since it might not have been obvious, but unfortunately there are no new maps being released with the PLA and Squad 4.0. Hopefully we will get some real Pacific maps in the near future, but until then we will have to fight over familiar objectives. It's a little bit of a bummer, but I think a lot of the new vehicles and weapons will definitely help inject some life in the maps that we've been playing for years now. So apart from China, in 4.0 there are a few quality of life changes, like allowing you to bandage while sprinting, which will now auto-cancel the sprint instead of simply preventing you from healing yourself, and a new icon to indicate that a vehicle is open top in the map legend. But looking over the rest of it, most of everything else are just simply smaller bug and optimization fixes. Now I will include the full list of patch notes in the description below if you do want to read a bit further and see if any of those annoying bugs that you might have dealt with have been fixed. But that's about everything that's been added in the game to Squad 4.0. Are you excited to test out these new and unique Chinese vehicles? Maybe instead blow them up with the new anti-tank launchers? Or perhaps you're looking forward to laying down some suppressing fire with the new QJB automatic rifle? Let me know in the comments below, and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. But that's it for me. Until next time, peace.